Now, in this discussion round, uh, we will uh, address more general terms, kind of uh, what are the general frameworks which are needed first to kind of uh, enhance and uh, strengthen the municipalities, but also to find a good play with the central uh, governments. And for that, we will have four uh, participants. I would start probably just on my left. Um, Louis Hawk. Uh, basically, he is Mr. Public finance management. Uh, he's been doing this all his life, obviously, uh, for the Australian government, for the World Bank. He's been working with 30 different countries. And since November 2014, you are actually the head of the Secretariat for the Public Expenditure and... Financial Accountability. Exactly. Called PEFA, in short. And we will hear much more about that in a minute. So you're originally from... Uh, I think they so give you the word when you're supposed to speak. <laughs> <laughs> it's a message that right now you're just supposed to listen to me uh, on that. Then, in the middle, and not for nothing, we have uh, the first and the only mayor of Kosovo. Uh, her name is uh, Mrs. Mimosa uh, Kusari Lila. And uh, you've been uh, um, mayor since 2013, if I'm correct. End of 2013. Then we have Holger. Uh, Holger Tersch, head of corporation, uh, Swiss corporation in uh, Tirana, Albania. And last but not least, um, a, a woman who impressed me by her CV, I will not even give it to you, because her academic background is quite astonishing, uh, studying in four different universities, now uh, doing actually a PhD also in, um, in uh, social and uh, public um, uh, Voilà, public and social uh, policies, and you're actually um, head of, uh, you're working for um, uh, the um, research um, organizations called Analytica, uh, uh, based in Bosnia-Herzegovina, and you are, have published a lot of studies and uh, researches and papers on that. So this is actually the panel. Uh, I'm not sure if, the, yes, uh, the number is up there. So uh, the idea of this uh, panel is to kind of look at three different aspects or conditions. Uh, uh, the first one will be a little bit the role of the mayor. Uh, that would be the first round of questions we would look at, and also the job sharing, if you want, between the local and uh, the central government. The second round will be re kind of the moment of uh, Louis, who will tell us everything about PEFA, uh, which is a diagnostic tool which helps us a little bit to look at uh, where we stand, and of course we will share experiences from all the panelists on that. And the last one will go back a little bit to um, uh, the civil participation. Uh, we heard a lot about that, and this will be the third round. So we will have about 10 minutes for each of the questions. While you listen to us, you can actually SMS so send SMSs to this following number, 0736333207. And so we will have kind of little bees who will look at all them, write them down, start to cross them, the one which actually have already been covered. And at the end, uh, we will take two or three uh, of, your, of your questions uh, to kind of share them with my panel. So that's a little bit the flow. Are you ready? Yes. Are you ready? Yes, okay, good. So let's start actually with Mimosa. Mimosa, uh, you're the mayor of uh, Djokova, and we will hear more about her. She has, uh, she will be coming back later as well, so she's actually also the mayor who will discuss with another mayor. Um, but as mayor, you're of course uh, the face of the municipality, and maybe just open a little bit of a bracket, FIFA. Okay, so uh, I should not do it, but we just saw that it was a headline. I mean, you know, you have a face, and right now you have a face related to FIFA, which is blotter. And so, you know, many things are kind of coming down to you in a certain way. So we do a secret sharing session, and secrets stay in the room. So can you maybe tell us what is the secret for you to, go to be a good mayor? 
Okay. okay, well, thank you for the compliment uh, or the statement and conclusion that I'm a good mayor. I've been a mayor for 17 months and uh, I've inherited a uh, governance in the municipality that was not proper with quite a lot of debts, uh, about 6 million, uh, at a budget of 20 million annual budget of the municipality and with no proper procedures, in particular financial and procurement procedures. Uh, the secret, I think, of every mayor is to balance the immediate or short-term needs and pressure of uh, your citizens with long-term goals and the vision that you have for development of municipality. In particular, if you're talking a, uh, in a country like Kosovo, which has about seven years of being independent country and 16 years since the end of the war with a lot of problems that you juggle on a daily basis. Uh, my secret, in brackets, how to say, is the fact that you keep open and transparent about every issue. It has come to um, the citizens of Jakova as a uh, breath of fresh air, the fact that we immediately open up the information to the citizens. We were there to work um, directly with donors. We have identified all the problems and three months in office, last year in March, we organized a donors conference where we presented the vision and we had all the idea th uh, our idea for the vision and development of Jakova municipality. There we said that there is a 40% of uh, municipality with no access to drinking water, which is quite a lot of burdensome for someone who's trying or striving to meet European standards when people, and it was said here, wake up in the morning, turn on their tap and there is no water. Or they had to go to the well to get the water or somewhere to the other source. Uh, we also identified the infrastructure prob problem and we've put a list of priorities and in the same time working with the short-term needs of people where we listed the most immediate ones. Uh, and we got lucky, of course, you get lucky if you work hard, if you keep communicating. We had the commitment of Swiss and German government for water waste treatment plant of 13 million euros uh, in Jakova municipality that we are in a process of implementing. Uh, the agreement was signed last year. This year uh, there is a uh, feasibility and also the detailed project. Uh, we have been also uh, elected by the European Commission for another project on infrastructure, the building, to offer better uh, citizen services. Uh, we've been last year declared as the most transparent municipality in Costa which was a great pride uh, for us uh, because it was uh, valued from an independent non-governmental organization from Pristina. Uh, there were six municipalities random randomly selected throughout Kosovo, including the capital, and uh, five other municipalities from four different parties, and Jakova came first, with being the one that shares all the information, all the budgetary discussions. When we talk public finance, uh, it was the first time last year that we had five public debates uh, on discussing the budget for 2015, but also we put a gender component to it because we realized that without having a, uh, a gender component or the inclusion of 50% of the population, you cannot have a successful governance. The other element is that you actually work on a hardware, but the software, the mindset of people is the one that changes the hardest. And the fact is that you realize when you come, become a mayor and when you're trying to become of course, you are transparent, you're being very communicative to people, then people come to you with your supporters to ask for favors. So basically, in the mindset of people in the Balkans generally is the fact that, okay, so there's a new mayor and it has another group of interests around her that will benefit. And I, this is like keep telling on daily basis. We have not changed the management of the municipality to change the group of people who would favor from the mayor. We have changed the management of municipality to have the whole benefit of successful governance to everyone regardless of their political affiliation. And um, the last one on this uh, revealing secrets, I would say the essential component of keeping track and communicating with the central government. My predecessor had this uh, concept or mindset that uh, he was from the opposition party at that time, that you play political games with the central government by saying to your people, see the central government does not support me and this is why we need to change the central government. I, when I, the day that I was sworn in in office, December 23rd, 2013, in my speech I said, I'm not going to play politics politics with your basic needs. Whatever it takes, whoever becomes a prime minister, we had elections in six months after that, I will work with them because my priority is your interest. My priority is not to play games, political games, with the people's basic needs. 
And I was able to show that, even though my party did not win the election central level, that the, a complete different constellation is the uh, central level. But I'm sure there are ministers and general secretaries that now know really well in detail about the vision of Jakova, because we keep communicating, we keep telling, we keep pushing, including the donor community that has been really present and um, definitely the, the two most important ones so far has been Swiss government and German government that really have been also flexible with us. Since you're working, you're benefiting from, a, we are currently benefiting from several projects. One of them is also demos on local governance that is designed in a certain way, but then when you start implementing, you want to change certain things and there is need to be a certain flexibility from yourself and from the um, organization that is implementing it from the donor side. So I guess it's, um, doing what, and I want to put this a, a statement on gender equality, I, have, I guess it's doing what every uh, mother at home does, juggling with too many problems at the same time. And this is, to end this one, this is why we need more women mayors. <laughs> Mirna, from a research perspective, uh, is that a good summary of the secret? Kind of be a good mother to your citizens? Or what would you add on that? What is actually the secret? Or what additional secret could you probably give to, to um, Mimos on that? Well, from what we can see also in uh, different, uh, from different empirical studies that have been done in the area of uh, public administration reform, um, but that obviously are based on certain uh, experiences and practice, is that essentially the mayor, um, the leader, and or the mayor in this case, can really serve as a focal point that can uh, uh, internalize certain norms and standards and I think this is something that would really be beneficial so if the mayor can lead by example and over the period of her mandate uh, really try to also work on the structures and the rules within the public administration, within the local government, then there is some certain, certain continuity after one day she leaves that people will continue to adhere to these standards of, as we heard before today, transparency, accountability, uh, citizen engagement. So I think that's also important to really uh, try to internalize this by uh, leading by example, by also uh, recognizing uh, exemplary behavior within the public administration by communicating uh, a joint mission. I think, of the local government. The walk the talk as well in this regard. Okay. Maybe just to come back quickly to, your, um, to the partnership or uh, labor division, if you want, or kind of shared job with uh, the central government. You kind of mentioned on one aspect that one should not kind of play political games. Uh, but what would, according to you, be really kind of the critical business fields which have to be uh, really looked at very carefully uh, in your collaboration uh, at the higher level? Uh, I think the, the fact or the, the experience of two years and seven months that I had, I used to be a Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Trade and Industry before becoming a mayor. Uh, I chose to leave that job because I believe that you need to be closer to people. The difference is that as a mayor, you're the first guard for every problem, regardless whether they are municipal problems or not. Uh, as a central le at, the, at the central level, you're dealing with policies, political level, you deal with your counterparts who are ministers who live completely different life from what people have there. As a mayor, it's very tricky to be able to explain to every minister who has not a, uh, a certain knowledge of the local governance the importance of this project without not boarding them or without not making your enemies. And uh, th this is the, the trickiest part. It, the element that I keep trying is put first the importance of the project and make it less subjective in terms of this individual is hindering me or because of this, this is not working. I keep showing the path. When we go to discuss a problem, we present a solution. This is very important for the central level because ministers dealing high politics, for example, today in the Parliament of Kosovo is a huge decision to vote for a special court. That fails. Ministers, MPs, everyone is involved in that. They will not be thinking of the fact that I have put in a request with the government for several months 
to seek a land uh, compensation for, for example, water waste treatment plant. But you have to come up and bring up these buzzwords, like say, okay, well, Prime Minister, we are risking a 13 million euros projects with these, these benefits, and this is the recommendation that we present to you. Why don't you make a decision on this? And it started. It started slowly, it's moving. Um, we already have been granted a guarantee from the Ministry of Finance to start uh, the negotiating with EBRD a 18 million euros project on uh, inner and outer road, ring road of Jakova municipality. For your information, the municipality is located southwest of Kosovo and it's bordering Albania. It's the municipality that has the longest line of border with Albania, but because of the circumstances of the previous system, it has been sort of a, a municipality that was cursed since it was the border long, it was Yugoslav military and then the war and everything bad happened there. So now we're trying to turn it from being a liability to an asset because there is a beautiful nature, a lot of um, uh, beautiful potential for tourism and agriculture. So we say, okay, we need to build a ring road, not only with Albania and Jakova, but also with uh, ja the main road of Jakova, Pristina and two other municipalities that we link. This we actually completely change the shift from being the marginalized municipality to being a center municipality of western Kosovo and northern Albania. And it took us several months again with Ministry of Finance, but in the end we came up with detailed project, we came up with the, uh, with the proposal and recommendation how we go about it. When I was trying ask finance from the government who is financially struggling, no one was interested to hear me. When I said, okay, well, EBRD has shown interest because we went ourselves to EBRD, present the project, got their interest, and then we started talking with the Minister of Finance and the Prime Minister, and all of a sudden, okay, well, you can do it. So we got a uh, green light, and I'm really happy that these will be projects that will mark whatever happens in my career. I'll know that when this is implemented, you'll be able to identify the success of your engagement with that work. With the fact that you're actually working parallel in, as I mentioned, and changing the um, the software, changing the mindset of the people, believing that you cannot just sit and wait at home for things to happen. As there is a saying, life doesn't come with the remote, so you have to stand up and change things yourself. No one is going to change them for you. Yes, we can. <laughs> exactly. Okay. <laughs> Good. Um, the attentive participants might have noticed that in the program we had given you, there had been another female mayor, actually, which was uh, planned to do the keynote speech right now. And uh, it was uh, uh, Dr. Arifi from Macedonia. And sometimes, as you know, one has priorities coming up, and uh, uh, she could unfortunately not join us. But one aspect uh, which uh, I thought was interesting, because I had looked at her uh, keynote speech, she, she kind of mentioned that, and this is a question for you, Louis. Uh, she kind of said that sometimes there is a difficulty, especially kind of uh, talking about the sharing of job sharing. She said sometimes we have to, to, we get sometimes the competencies, but not the resources for it. Okay. So I would like to know your secrets. Again, you know, we're in secret sharing. What is the secret? Or is there any magic match on trying to balance this sharing of uh, uh, or addressing uh, giving competencies? and giving the resources going along with it. And how can the PEFA maybe help that? I think there's, uh, there's no real secret. It's the, the important thing is that there is a very clear, uh, open and regular dialogue between central government and local government. And I think Mimosa has made that clear in what she's saying. Basically, um, people need to know what the responsibilities are, uh, what the services cost, how to deliver them, and how much money they need to deliver them, and also when the money needs to come. I think one of the uh, illustrations from, from our PEFA, our kind of x-ray of the insides of public finance, is that uh, a lot of local governments suffer because they're never sure of how much money they're going to get from central government. They try to plan their budgets, but they can never be sure. And even uh, if they know the amounts, it's sometimes tied to very specific things, like it's tied to a specific project, or they have to use it in a certain way. If, they're, if it's going to education or to health, it can only be used for certain things, but it might not match with local priorities. And I think the flexibility of central government to, to um, adjust to local needs can make a really big difference. 
And I think that's where local government having a voice in uh, planning of the budgets at the beginning of the year and also being accountable for the money that they spend is quite an important aspect. Okay. Thank you very much. Holger, a secret from you too. Um, <laughs> Swiss corporations usually have a preference to kind of um, have an entry point at the municipal level, but certain, sometimes there are certain things or objectives you would, you would like to reach which has to be also addressed at a higher level. So. Well, the question to you is, what is your secret in your, in your work to kind of balance these uh, different interventions in order to reach your goal? Yeah, Does this work? Yes. Yeah. Thank, you, uh, thank you very much for the, for the question. I don't think it's uh, absolutely an easy one, and I'm, I'm not sure I could answer for the whole uh, Swiss corporation. However, I think I would like to raise those points that I think are very important first, is that we have a strategy, uh, we follow that strategy, and that you know, linking a little bit on the role of the mayor, it mostly goes beyond, or it extends beyond, you know, the, the tenure of a, of a mayor or the tenure of a central government. So this gives us also this credibility, I think, in, in the frame of uh, our cooperation and the frame of the countries which we work with. So if we can extend that uh, uh, good cooperation with mayors and also central government beyond a strategy period, that's even better. It shows we have a similar engagement. So that's one thing I, I really find very important, um, the length, the duration, the planning and the sequencing of, of everything we do. I would just like to, to not to make it too long, take two examples concretely from Albania. Uh, one is related to uh, the way we have talked before, the, the, the famous uh, DLDP, and I say famous because it's been ongoing for a long time, working at the municipal level. Of course, it was more uh, directed to the north of Albania. There, there's been some very good results, and now it has also expanded more to, to, uh, to other areas of the countries to make it more national. But this is a little bit what, uh, what uh, links me to this uh, question of how do we also multiply our efforts when we, when we work with municipalities because, uh, of course, we have had uh, wonderful results, I would say, in the case of uh, DLDP at the very local level. Uh, but I think with uh, now different programs that we have also with the Council of Europe, I want to mention, uh, but also at the central level now with uh, support we give to the territorial and administrative reform. It's really sort of a big package of, of different items and we, since we have the pleasure of playing the, the role of lead donor uh, in Albania for these uh, decentralization matters, I think it really gives us uh, uh, a quite strong position in the country. And I think this really sort of uh, collects, connects the dots of, uh, of the realities that happen at the local level and at the more national level, given that we also work with our international partners on those, so it's not something Switzerland does on its own. So that's the one example I wanted to give. I uh, might come back uh, to it later, but uh, the other one is related to the waste, uh, the waste sector. We had this example of, uh, of waste being dealt with at the municipal level, the communal level. Um, I think a very uh, important successes we have seen there. I want to stress that, of course, if I look from the SDC side, we would work mostly um, at the local level with communities to see what, what are their needs. That's the, that would be the approach, bottom up. Um, and that's how we, how we did it also on that, on that regard. This also explains why we're working with waste. You might have seen a little bit on the, on the film that we have seen that, uh, of course, uh, Albania has a lot to do uh, in that regard. But you also know and probably know that there is no incinerator in Albania. There is no infrastructure to deal with, uh, with all this, uh, this waste. And so for that reason, we also have to look at the comprehensive uh, actions. We cannot tackle, I would say, uh, waste only from a local perspective. So that's also meaning that even the program DLDP is looking at it from a more regional perspective. And uh, we will have SECO coming in, so that should uh, fit nicely the complementarity of both institutions, one work, working more at the um, um, infrastructure level, the other one working more at the governance and, uh, and that sort of level. I just want to conclude, I'm sorry I'm a bit long, but um, conclude with one thing that, that's yes, true. But one thing that I found is important perhaps to mention at this stage is uh, that the, the, the differences or, or the, 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 the borders between local and, uh, and uh, national, the borders between urban and rural, they, they are continuous. I think there's no straight line that can be drawn and I think that's also where we draw on collaborating with our different instruments. Thank you. 
Uh, we saw throughout uh, the sessions uh, earlier this afternoon that uh, lack of infrastructures is sometimes a problem or that also the surfaces are very costly. Uh, we also saw that it was good to be able to anticipate and know what kind of budget we have available. So now a question to you, Lewis, in this regard. Uh, how can your famous PEFA, kind of this diagnostic tool, uh, help the mun municipalities to provide good services? I think probably the main advantage of our, our methodology, which has been developed by, uh, in cooperation with the Swiss government over the last 15 years, is to give mayors and, uh, and other governments and also donors an idea of the strengths and weaknesses of public finances, looking from how they budget, how they decide on how much money they have, how they allocate the funds to specific priorities, whether they make sure that the cash is available when it's needed, whether they're uh, procuring goods and services and infrastructure properly, uh, whether they're reporting and providing information to the public uh, and allowing the public to engage with the, with the government, and also making sure that governments are accountable for how they use the funds. Our methodology basically looks at all elements of that cycle, provides the government with a report card, and then, uh, identifying the strengths and weaknesses, it helps them to say, okay, well, we may be doing good in some areas, but we need to strengthen in other areas of our public finances to make sure that we're delivering services efficiently, the sorts of things that people want and, and how they want them. So, yes? I just wanted to um, add, if I may, to your point, extend it further. Um, I think uh, PEFA and, and uh, generally the financial reporting, it's not only needed, so it tells the government. I truly believe that the, the theme of the conference on the assistance that has been done to Western Balkans or Eastern Europe, it's important also for, also for the donors. I've seen it and, and I've felt it in my skin as a mayor to actually have very scarce resources, not because the government did not uh, allocate them to my municipality, but because someone else was incompetent or did not spend them well and left huge amounts of debt. So I think having a proper and transparent uh, financial uh, uh, procedures in place, being open about your procurement processes, it will also increase and strengthen credibility of the municipality toward the donors. And having a vision for yourself, the donor will say, okay, we have this amount of money and we can help this municipality. We see they're striving to make it better. Now I'll go to the other side and I'll step on the shoes of the people who think that, okay, well, why do we keep financing or giving money to Western Balkans there? It's never gonna be easy. I think while we still have countries in Western Balkans with people that have lack of, uh, or have no access to drinking water, uh, it's, it, it will always be the problem specifically for countries who are geographically developed and close to the Balkans. So for anyone who feels that our money is going to Western Balkans, I would say you are not investing in the Western Balkans, you are investing in the stability of your country because people will be happy if they have water access at home and they will have roads and proper infrastructure and job and they will not come to Switzerland, Austria or Germany to seek better life. <laughs> Again. <laughs> yes, Luis. I think that's uh, it's a really good point about donors because donors need good information as well about firstly how they can help governments and uh, methodologies like ours helps uh, donors to identify where the government specifically needs help and how how that help can be provided. It also helps. Um, the donors in that they can be sure that the money is going to be spent effectively. When they, when they see that a government is scoring well against our methodology, then they can trust in the way their funds are going to be used and, and that the results will actually be delivered. And I hope that in future, the sorts of programs that Ilyana was talking about before will benefit from our methodology because it will provide assurance to private sector finance providers that governments are actually reliable and they, they will pay their debts on time. So why, do, why don't we actually ask the question to a donor? Uh, I mean, PEFAs are, have been regularly being conducted uh, in, uh, in Albania, if I'm right. 
Yeah, I mean, that's, uh, there has been PFAS uh, conducted at the national level. Uh, at the local level, it's, uh, it's not so common. But um, I think what, what I might want to stress is I would absolutely underscore what, uh, what Louis has just said about the importance for donors to have uh, good working mechanisms. I think that's almost like uh, stating something that we would also easily adhere to all of us here, but at the same time, maybe it's not so obvious uh, for uh, for the countries to to live through that uh, um, I would say those perspectives and those uh, expectations from donors so I think it's a it's a slow process of building these capacities and I, I think we have been again through our local governance program very sort of listening to the needs uh, that are on the on the ground and working from that perspective on on public financial management but we're also looking forward to to working at it more on the on the national level and that's something we have been exploring with seco together and so how to see how to meet with with uh, the different instruments that we have and also you know being sure that we apply the the standards and for that i think seco is also a very strong partner to to apply uh, existing standards you mentioned we have to listen to the people, so I think I would move to the third uh, uh, question uh, around. It's about the citizen participation in this regard. So, uh, Mirna, uh, what, I mean, you coming from Bosnia-Herzegovina, what is currently uh, the state of uh, the civil society in this regard? And how can we encourage them to be more active in the political uh, process and participating in, uh, in, in also political decision process? based on your many studies and experience on that? Sure, I mean, um, as you said, ideally citizens should be able to make demands towards the local government. They should be able to communicate their needs and also call government to account for their action and non-action. Certainly they need certain access points for this, uh, some sort of participatory mechanisms. Um, I would say that there still remains to be, a lot remains to be done, um, not only in Bosnia, but also in the entire region. Um, currently, you do have, for example, local self-government laws in the, in the different countries prescribing certain uh, participatory mechanisms. But in practice, these processes often rely on uh, the goodwill of a mayor who is, you know, just uh, engaging with citizens or on the ability of citizens to self-organize around certain issues. Um, so I believe that a lot remains to be done in that respect to ensure that really there are processes in place that are meaningful where, for example, if you organize a budget hearing, you're not uh, drawing or inviting the citizens in late when they can't really make uh, an influence anymore and you're just uh, having this sort of uh, window dressing uh, uh, activity. Um, in that sense, in Bosnia, I think it's really important to work on these issues because, uh, in general, uh, we did some surveys and uh, citizens have very low trust in government in general. Uh, they have the highest trust in local government at only 36%. And uh, at uh, higher levels of government, it's even lower. It's around 20 to 25%. Uh, at the same time, uh, they also believe, we asked them this question, they also believe that uh, these public hearings are often formal events uh, where they can really exert little influence. Uh, so in that sense, I think there is opportunity to strengthen uh, participation uh, through meaningful processes. Um, and one level where you could do this is essentially also this uh, sub-municipal level of government. So really the, the community, the neighborhood level. Uh, last year we did a very interesting, a very comprehensive empirical study for SDC on uh, the so-called Mjesna Zajednica. So these were during uh, former Yugoslavia very sort of strong kind of community engagement uh, hubs where citizens could um, essentially decide on different communal issues. Um, and what we found through this study is that although these 
uh, venues, these bodies, have been stripped of their competences and a lot of the times of, of their sources to funding, um, they still do serve in many places as important venues uh, for participation. Essentially, what people do is they um, they use them. Uh, they're they're used to um, as sort of um, as collective action bodies. Really, they initiate, they uh, facilitate collective action. So. People would essentially, for example, uh, gather around such bodies to build infrastructure or to make demands towards the local government. So, for example, I'm very glad that uh, uh, SDC, together with uh, the Swedish government, is uh, planning to uh, strengthen uh, these local communities in Bosnia and to make them hopefully into meaningful venues for participation. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, Louis, maybe a tricky question in the sense that PEFA looks at the whole loop, if you want, and also at the uh, uh, legislative uh, process and the budget at this level. So to what extent can actually the parliament, for instance, influence uh, the way uh, budget is, uh, is actually used and the policy oriented? I mean, can PEFA contribute in a certain way at this level as well? Well, we, we certainly look at the, uh, the role of government in two specific areas. Firstly, in the approval of the budget. And um, one of the things that we try to make sure is that the, the parliaments have enough information to make decisions on how to appropriate money, um, but also that they have enough time to consider these and to debate them, and to the extent that there's an open discussion with the public that they... Uh, that the public are aware of uh, what's in the budget and have an opportunity to contribute. The right timing. The right timing, yeah. And, uh, and, and also, at that point, basically the parliament is representing the citizen and saying to the government, yes, we approve of what you plan to do, or no, there are certain things that we think need to change and uh, we suggest you change it. So they're, they're kind of a guardian of the citizen in a way. And at the end of the process, at the end of the budget, they review the financial reports and the reports by the audit authorities to make sure that the government has actually done what they said they were going to do. And if they haven't, or if there are ways that things can be improved, that they hold the government to account and say, well, if you uh, revise the way you do things, then people will be much better off. And so that's basically, we look at both of those areas and, and assess how well those, those things are operating in a country and at a municipal level. Maybe a final question from my side, and this would be actually for Holger. Uh, the Swiss Corporation uh, has a preference also to work with the civil society, and I just wanted to know currently what are the latest trends in cooperating uh, with the civil society in Albania, if there are any. Yeah, well, thank you very much. It's, um, it's, I think, very important for Albania, maybe even more than in the rest of the Balkans, to just uh, recall the history and I think uh, that also this, the relationship with the civil society and the forms the civil society has taken in Albania is probably a bit different than what we imagine in a, in a, uh, as a civil society. I think there's been a, a lot of mistrust. Uh, a number was uh, mentioned a bit earlier on government, uh, local governments. I think only 37 to 40 percent of people believe in their government, so I think there's still a, a big a level of uh, not believing in national institutions. I think uh, the justice system is, is uh, still not working properly. The rule of law is not applied uh, uh, throughout the system, and that's uh, really saying it uh, very, very shortly. Uh, but I think the, um, uh, the, at the end of the day now we have, I would also say through social media, like in other uh, places, uh, some more indications that the, there is some civic, I would say more like civic movements, how it's organized is a bit more difficult perhaps to say, maybe we could also talk about groups of interest and so on. But I think what we do as, as cooperation right now, I'd say as a trend, yes we are, and that's something new we have ha not had in the past. We're just launching a, a new program to, to help those civic movements to, 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 to t take a stronger voice and um, hopefully we can create some open data platforms that will exactly again help the financial and fiscal management of, of local communities. We will work at the local level again on these, on these areas. 
that is very promising, but I cannot give you any results at this stage, unfortunately. And then also in health, because that's a new sector where we're working with, uh, we also plan to have a specific action that helps uh, people to be engaged uh, for the accountability of the system, because that's a, that's a major weak element there. Okay, thank you very much. Now we'll move to questions from the public. And uh, there were quite some for, for Mimosa. Even so, we will hear about her in a minute again. So, but uh, one, I think, which many people probably have in mind would be, I don't have my glasses with me, uh, what is particularly easy or particularly hard as a woman mayor in Kosovo? Uh, I don't have <laughs> Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Uh, I don't think there is anything easy in particular. Okay. Uh, it's easy if you don't, don't do anything. Um, in particular, I don't think it's hard exactly because of the fact that I'm a woman, but I think it's hard because the transition in our society is lasting. Uh, the, there might be different perceptions, but you, get to, you have to get used to it. I've been now in public life for 12 years, and. Uh, I've learned that in the Balkans generally, and in Kosovo in particular, if you're a woman in politics, you're much easier to be um, talked about, to be written about, to be called names. And I said, you know, you, take, you have no other way just to actually put that behind you, pick some really strong women who have gone through this path and say that, I love this, the saying of uh, uh, Margaret Thatcher. She had said that if you, um, if you even if they see you walking uh, on the river, they'll say she's walking because she cannot swim. So whatever you do, they will always find a reason to complain about. So uh, I think that in terms of the public perception, generally positive, then, then there are vo voices. But the hardest part, for me, not as a woman, but as a mother, I could say being away or staying away from my two kids. Mm -hmm. That's, uh, in the end of the day, when you get exhausted, when you have 12 hours a day work, which happens quite often, um, I think, and I think of how many things I've missed, like the first day in kindergarten of my second child or the, some uh, football event of my older one. I have two sons, so I think softening myself or revealing a secret, that would be the, the major miss that I would look back and think about. I hope there was not a special event with your children today, and uh, <laughs> we would feel bad about that. So now, final, final question. That's for you, Holger, and I'll give you a minute for that. Uh, you will see it's easy, really easy going. How do you coordinate your action with the enlargement mission of the European Union, considering, considering that the conception of democracy differs between Switzerland and UE? One minute. Yeah, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be longer. I think. Okay. No, I think the uh, the uh, coordination happening uh, with this, between Switzerland and the delegation, because we have the, the, uh, an important delegation in in Albania, uh, happens on a regular level. Um, we have within the, the decentralization network and working groups uh, a very strong interaction and where also the, the EU is, 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 a, is an integral part of it. That's our main mechanism to do so. And I, and I want to finish with one thing because we're so fast. There are, there's, a, there's a new tendency now at the EU um, that uh, they want to create uh, integrated policy management groups which are a higher level coordination mechanism which will be led on, only by the government, maybe with the help of a donor like Switzerland, and where I think the EU will also play a much stronger role in the future to, to bring all this together. I think that's a very important development. Okay, so thank you very much. Uh, so thank, um, this is actually the final uh, question, was the final question. We will now do kind of a change of floor, but I would like to thank very much uh, Mirna uh, Mimosa. I thank you too, but I will thank you in a minute again, Louis and Holger. So thank you very much for participating. Again, if you have further questions, there is plenty of time afterwards as well. So thank you very much to all of you.